Welcome to Standing Ground Media. Please don't forget to uh, make sure you're subscribed. Like this video if you enjoy the work I'm doing. And also please don't forget to share this channel so that you can help it grow. Today I'm going to be talking about something that will probably be very controversial, but I do not apologize for that in one bit. We can't be afraid to bring up controversy. We need to talk about these things no matter how uncomfortable they are. Going back and remembering some of the earlier um, things I researched in my 20s, this is uh, back in the 90s now, I remember uh, clearly being... Um, a big fan of Art Bell's show, which is an AM radio station, and he was constantly bringing up uh, fringe topics of uh, UFOs and conspiracy. And, and um, thinking about uh, those times, I, I was remembering um, a very popular host or a guest of his on his show, Dr. Malachi Martin. And uh, so I went back and started re listening to some of those interviews. And um, I found one that was actually conducted by somebody else, which I uh, don't have written down here in my notes. But um, it, uh, it, I'm going to play this interview for you, and, and, and it goes into some, some very eye-popping things that um, I think everybody should be aware of. He, Dr. Malachi Martin was, a, um, a, a, in his early career with the, the uh, Roman Catholic Church, he was a Jesuit who um, asked to have his uh, vows uh, released from um, being a Jesuit in the, in the early 60s. He then moved into uh, New York City, became an American citizen, and um, began working as, um, as an uh, exorcist and, uh, and claims to have uh, performed thousands of of minor and major exorcisms in his career and uh, many uh, um, movies are based on his work he's written 17 books um, and um, what, what he's going to talk about here uh, are several important things one of them is he's going to begin this interview going into um, how he feels the church was being penetrated from outside by um, groups such as Freemasonry, and I would have to argue that he's probably uh, unadmittingly going to have to um, uh, include the Jesuits, which he resigned from. Um, but other secret societies um, in particular were, were um, penetrating the church with the intent of corrupting it from the inside. He also goes in to talk about um, Catholic Church doctrine um, and his belief that all power on the earth comes from Christ, which then goes through the vicar, which is the Pope. Um, that's very controversial outside of the Catholic Church. Uh, then the, one of the most powerful uh, aspects of this interview is going to be when he starts to talk about Lucifer being enthroned into the church and he doesn't water this down at all it's it's not just you know spirits or um, minor demons he 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 calls it out as it is lucifer satan and um even it goes on to talk about who he, uh, in in his mind is possessed by by uh, these powerful demonic forces the, he also talks about um Satanists in society or, and who they are and how really dangerous this situation is um, and there's other prominent Roman Catholics who have spoken out on the church's satanic problem such as uh, Father Amorth who is also an exorcist and Archbishop uh, Emmanuel Malingo who in 1996 in a world peace conference um, stood up in in front of everybody and declared this satanic issue so um, listen closely to this interview I know it's a little bit long but you know I've I felt that every bit of it was important or I would have trimmed it down as much as possible which I already did so I did some trimming to it to get it shortened but it's still a bit long so if you don't have the time to listen to this thing in it in its entirety I really urge that you put this um, 
for later you know save it bookmark it whatever you need to do because it's important for everyone to uh, understand the implications of every bit of this interview it's very powerful and then at the end I'm going to talk about it I'm going to give some my, some of my own thoughts and insights as to what this stuff really means for everybody whether you're a believer or non-believer this stuff really does affect you so here it is Dr. Malachi Martin but we do now know we have the evidence of it and someday we can publish it all we do now know that there was a plan which influenced John the 23rd to call the council and once the council was called we now know that cardinals like Cardinal Sunins of Belgium and uh, Koenig of Vienna and a whole list of German cardinals and French cardinals connived to change the council from being a Catholic council to being what it became as something which disrupted the tradition of the church and uh, uh, which produced the documents that are now formed the basis of the universal apostasy in the Roman Catholic Church. We now know that. It was a carefully laid plan and it came from non-Catholic sources. Why? Well, look at it like this. It's the, now the 1950s and the strongest growing body in the international sphere is the Roman Catholic Church. And it has a very strong Pope called Pacelli, who is going to die uh, immediately. And they're spreading all over the world and a great respectability. What do you do about that? You plan to disrupt it from inside, to penetrate it and therefore you penetrate it by means of co-opting several cardinals into the Masonic Lodge, become members of the Lodge, and very respectable members of the Lodge, and bishops also, and priests, and you proceed to, to introduce homosexuality as quite a, an acceptable mode of life for anybody, including priests and nuns. You do this very carefully. That is what has happened. Who formed that plan? Well, whether people like it or not, and later history will show conclusively we have very dire enemies who see the Roman Catholic Church as the one big obstacle to their plans. Why? Because the Roman Catholic Church says um, I have ultimate authority over anything you do. Anything you do which is a moral action I am the authority. Number two, I am also the authority on education. I must have the children to educate. They have to be educated by me in the beginning. We claim education. And thirdly, then, we claim, finally, to be the source of all power. Very few people know it, Bernard. But finally, papal doctrine is that even political power descends through the papacy. The papacy doesn't insist on that any longer because uh, it's not accepted. But de facto, all power on earth comes from Christ. And his only vicar on earth is the Pope. And the idea of democracy, that is, the people are, have power, I'm sorry, that's not Catholic. The people have power through Christ, from Christ. The idea that power resides in the people and people can give the power to whom they like, that's, that's a half-boiled doctrine. The full doctrine is that all power comes from Christ. He said it himself, all power is given to me in heaven and on earth. He stole the apostles. Uh, and therefore, it descends through him or through his vicar who is only one man and one man only. And we have now the 264th successor of Peter uh, in the throne, and he is, through Christ, the source of political power, political authority, political authenticity, political uh, genuineness. That's the true Catholic doctrine. But these enemies go back, I think, right from the time that uh, Christ walked this earth. Because wasn't there a meeting of the Sanhedrin to do something to stop uh, sure, Jesus? Sure, sure. But they were only acting. You see, uh, but if other people admit it or not, and it, uh, it's irrelevant whether they admit it or not, in this world, you're either serving Christ or you're serving Lucifer. There, there are only two issues at stake. There's good and there's bad. And good is represented by Christ and bad is represented by, by Lucifer. You may not know Christ. You may be a Buddhist. You've never heard of him. Or if you did, you heard about it vaguely. You may be a Muslim who never heard about it. 
You can be a Muslim in Indonesia or in Algeria or in Saudi Arabia and never know about Christ. But if you're serving good, you're serving Christ. And the grace to do so comes through Christ one way or the other. If you don't, if you're cruel, if you're evil, if you're pernicious, if you're a liar, if you're a perjurer, that's all the work of Lucifer, no matter what your form of religion is, no matter who, what your color of your skin is, it's from Lucifer. Those two divide up humanity. And uh, today, uh, unfortunately, the denial of Christ's revelation is abroad in the Church of Christ, the organization. That's the difficulty. And people have got to, I find more and more Catholics and more and more people have got to, even non-Catholics, I always point out to them, there's a distinction between the union of all believers who are practicing their faith and those and the organization which vehicles that. The Roman Catholic Church is the ideal vehicle for believers in Christ. But it's only an organization and it's fading. And one of the themes of Windswept House, the sub-theme sub of this book, is that in a short time, humanly speaking, there will be no Holy Roman Catholic Church organization visible. There won't be any. And we must deal with that. But okay. something must have happened, like, that would have caused, let's say, since the 1960s, for this um, organization to seemingly uh, start self-destructing. Yeah. Uh, Auto-demolition. Yeah, there was this consecration, this enthronement of Satan within the Vatican, of Lucifer, by the way. Now, did that actually happen? Yes, it's a historical fact. It was done one particular day by a certain group of people representing Luciferians all over the world, especially American Luciferians. It was done. And therefore, in a certain sense, Lucifer has power. He doesn't own yet, but I'm sure he hopes to own some Pope as his man. I'm sure he does. And he expects to own some Pope, not the present Pope, but some Pope, so that the house is really his. And the only one who can expel him is the owner of the house, and that owner is the Pope. They must be okay one way or the other, must be all right. So it's it's I'm pointing this out as the effect of the Luciferian influence in the Vatican. No doubt about it. Lucifer is the prince, and he has now a place within the central citadel of the church. Now, in your book, there is an exorcist uh, called uh, Father Slattery. That's right. And uh, you are an exorcist as well. What um, perspective? does being an exorcist give you about the current uh, crisis in the church? As an exorcist, when you do exorcisms, minor and major, the demons constantly taunt you with the condition of the church. They say, well, we're in St. Peter's. We can talk to whom we like. We have representatives sitting beside your Pope every day. What are you talking about? We are legit. I'm quoting demons now. This is what he said to you. How dare you? And our prince has been enthroned, installed. And you're still against us? What are you trying to persecute us for? When you're trying to expel demons. And it's a dreadful thing. Oh, it keeps, you keep repeating the name of Jesus and the prayers and the command to get out. They eventually do, under protest. But what they fling at you is that. Or they say, well, we're in honor amongst the cardinals of, uh, of France. We are, we, the prince is worshipped by some of these people. And we can't be so bad as all that. Why are you against us? I assure you, the reality of exorcism, the reality of demon possession, is totally different. It, 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 I remember, to give you an example, there was a Dr. Hammond psychologist who always kept saying the same thing. He said, this is all imagination. He said, that these people require very careful therapy. So finally, and he said, let me be present at an exorcism, a thing we don't do normally. So finally we, had, we admitted him. Hammond never went back to psychiatry. He became a Catholic, and he was Jewish originally. Um, once he was hit by the reality of the demon, of the demonic presence. It's something that you don't forget, and it's nothing like looking at the exorcist. 
or any, any of the set in the scriptures with thread and with, with claws and, and, and cloven hooves and big yellow eyes and cruel. No, that's, that's lovely imagination. And people love it because it's, it's goosebumps. But it's not reality. Not reality, no. And the reality seems to be, then, that these um, Satanists tend to be uh, very respected men in respected professions. The Satanists I know, who belong to Luciferian and Satanist covens in New York, are all lawyers, doctors, uh, architects, uh, nurses, um, brokers, uh, businessmen, entrepreneurs. And it, they're perfectly respectable citizens. They pay their taxes. They even contribute to the local church. Some of them are Catholic, some of them are Protestant, some of them are Jewish. No, they're perfectly respectable as far as civic life goes. They're mothers of civic behavior. And they usually have great sexual property and business property. Their word is their bond. And their work as surgeons or as, as doctors or, or research scientists is impeccable. No, they're perfectly respectable. But they are worshippers of Lucifer. And these men, do they have a very large uh, undetected influence? Of course they have, because uh, they constantly represent the Satanist influence, the Luciferian principle, that there's nothing above the sky and there's nothing beneath the earth, there's just us, alive for 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years, and then it's over. So, uh, snatch the day. Is there a distinction then, um, amongst the enemies of the church, let's say within the church, between those uh, men who know what they're doing in uh, serving Lucifer yeah. and those people who, let's say, during the Cold War were called useful idiots. Yes, there is a distinction. There is a distinction. But when you, when you finally unravel any one of the idiots, they finally begin to see that they themselves willingly were co-opted, willingly were taken and refuse to think, because the advantages they got were huge. So there's always a measure of responsibility always, then? Always, always, always. The only thing is, some are destined to fulfill important jobs. Some of them are destined to become cardinals, which is very important. Some of them are just simple priests, simple bishops, very much. But some of them are destined to be influential, and therefore can do so much harm. And they get special attention. Believe you me, they get special attention from yourself. And they get special um, treatment and they get enlightenment. They, they, they have light. They, they, they devise a means of doing what they're supposed to do. And they get riches. And they get preference. And they're liked. And then there's this bird, which is a very frightening phenomenon. They know each other. I, I, I can never explain this. But they know, even in a crowd, they'll find each other. It's, there's, there's a spiritual smell. There's a sign on their forehead. There, I don't know what it is. They know each other. All right. Uh, appreciate that you've come this far. It's a that that was a long uh, long interview. A um, lot to go go through and digest. And and uh, appreciate that you've paid attention this long. And and I really think that you should uh, appreciate yourself for paying attention that long. It's very important information. So let's uh, um, let's go through some of that. Um, one of the first things he talks about right away is is um, you know the the Roman Catholic Church has dire enemies who see them as a big obstacles, and that's where he was talking about the infiltration of uh, Freemasonry and uh, secret society um, with an agenda to corrupt the the Catholic Church to to uh, to control it. Um, but you know that's something that that um, I, I I have a very big problem with because they're that he uses the word to destroy the church and and I, I there there isn't an agenda to destroy the catholic church the catholic church is as strong as ever they claim that they're losing numbers they're really not they're one of the most wealthy institutions on the planet they have political and moral power over millions and millions of billions of people they have 1.2 billion followers networked around the world according to today's statistics so no they're actually a perfect vessel for those um, uh, demonic uh, luciferian plans infiltrating it and keeping it intact is the best way to use a group like this not to destroy it um, but and then he also you know using the the instance where he's he's describing the the pope being the vicar uh, 
to Christ and so that they have this moral authority over um, everybody. Nobody has moral authority over themselves. The church does. So that, that, that again, that's another way that, that this Catholic, um, Roman Catholic institution is a perfect vessel for Luciferian plans. You, you gain control over the, the authority of the church. You can influence the thoughts and beliefs and, and um, the morality of billions of people. So, you know, the church simply, you know, billions of members, they, they, uh, they spread themselves throughout the uh, entire uh, world. And of course, you know, with that many followers, and, and then you have the, the military Jesuit wing of the Roman Catholic Church, it's uh, it's really easy to kind of get a grasp that that it, that um, that institution can be very influential throughout the world for a Luciferian agenda. Um, you you can imagine that the those members could be uh, parts of government, parts of science, um, high-ranking members of society that um, can influence the the layman to their Luciferian ideas and agenda. So then. Um, you know, uh, first I, I like to bring up the, the example in the Bible um, where Jesus expels demons. He, you know, the, um, it's in, in Matthew uh, chapter 8, verses 28 through 34, and also in Mark um, chapter 5, verses 1 through 17. Um, and gives the examples of um, Jesus uh, expelling demons. So one particular individual had many demons that it's described as legion um, and of course they begged Jesus not to uh, expel them from this man um, which immediately lets you know that Jesus has ultimate authority he casts them out with with, with very little effort he has that kind of power um, and of course you listen to Malachi Martin talk about his exorcisms they're they're taunting him and and um, you know really making it difficult and like he said after much protest they do leave um, so 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 there's that you know rec recognize that Jesus has got ultimate authority when it comes to that kind of thing um, and and we as human beings do have the power to in, in my belief this this exorcism is is a reality you know that um, believers in Christ can exercise demons so uh, when he's talking about the demons taunting him um, that they have uh, people next to the Pope they're inside St. Peter's Basilica and he uses the, the words the prince is installed he's worshipped by them um, so that goes to show just how corrupted this institution can be um, and it wouldn't be hard to hide the, that truth from the general public. You know, and, and so then he goes into talking about Satanism. Um, you know, it, they're inside religious institutions. They follow the laws. They pay taxes. And, you know, quote-unquote, perfectly respectable models of civic behavior. Um, so in other words, you wouldn't know them. You wouldn't know that you're, you're talking to a Satanist unless, of course, they... Um, provided that information to you because you know whatever reasons they may have to indoctrinate you or bring you in um, but but they're they're but they're not gonna they're not gonna broadcast that um, that they're, they're you know these people are doctors they're lawyers they're politicians they're research scientists they're people of high um, influence within our society uh, that um, you, you know Luciferian agenda is 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 real and you, you've got to put that in your mind and, and realize that this is a very serious um, implication that he brings forth here with Satanists. And, uh, you know, he talks about some are destined to fill important jobs and, and he sees that, that you know, those, those people, they get special attention from this demonic influence. He's, he's seen this throughout his, his career and he's, he's speaking specifically about the church but of course, the same agenda can be carried out in in the fields of science, in politics, in Hollywood. You know, if Satan can turn members of the church against God and truth, really, how much more elementary is it for him to turn members of science? I mean, it's simple. You know, he if he's able to turn men of faith away from God towards Satan himself, it. The, 
people without God are, are, are nothing. All he has to do is provide a, a little incentive, you know, a little carrot on the stick, and, and these people would jump at an opportunity to better advance themselves for, for fame or money. Um, and, and we see that in, in, in society today. And then, so, if you go into uh, the story in the book of Matthew, where Jesus is led up the mountain, the top of a high mountain, and he is shown by Satan the entire visible world, and, and of course, uh, Satan offers anything and everything uh, to Jesus in, in the visible seen world before him. And, um, you know, of course, Jesus rebukes him. He says, get behind me, Satan. The same can be um, shown in the book of Job. Um, and, you know, and the, of course, the greatest trick that he ever played is convincing the world he doesn't exist. He's, you know, he, he operates in, in invisibly uh, um, through uh, powers of, of man. Uh, he's not standing out in the open saying, look at me. And, and so that is the trick he's playing today as well. You know, he's, he's operating behind the scenes in secret, in, in, in darkness, and, and bringing us to today. You know, you just like the Roy Roman Catholic Church, you, you know, it's a, it's a moral authority. There's also authorities in science, which, you know, NASA, the Smithsonian, physics, evolution. Of course, your TV is just full of... Um, uh, subjective thoughts that are given to you by Discovery Channel, History Channel, on and on and on. Um, and, and another avenue is the education system. It's a government-led system. It's not very hard to conceive the idea a Luciferian agenda could become um, prevalent inside uh, an institution like government to provide um, prescribed ideas for the general populace to adhere to. Um, you're told what to think, not how to think. Uh, and again, education is on the TV as well. Um, so information um, at a whole, if you look at how dominated our news and media sources are, you have uh, six corporations that own uh, over 90% of all the media you're, you're going to look at on, on TV, radio, and so on. Um, boil, boiling that down even further, you know, there, there's 230 some executives of those six corporations and its subsidiaries that that are going to to um, control exactly what you see um, and and therefore possibly what you think. You know, how hard would it be to accept that uh, uh, this Luciferian agenda that Satan could promote chosen people into positions of influence throughout the modern world? I mean, he's been misleading mankind since the garden, and yet we are conditioned from childhood to accept things as fact without doing any personal investigation from quote-unquote authority or authorities without even considering the possibility that the information or theories, I might note strongly, theories that they offer, we don't even question if they're true or completely untrue. And then from the... the the base for more false assumptions to creep in by accepting these false theories and assumptions. And, you know, and one of the, the ways this happens can be shown throughout history is through secret societies. Um, there again, the Jesuits and the, and the Freemasons are, are two that just continue to pop in my mind. They're very secret and um, prominent and religious, uh, scientific and, and um, very... very High members of, of society are are found to be from these secret societies, and they're both equally susceptible to the wiles of Satan, and obviously very strong handpicking grounds for um, those willing to do the work of the enemy. All right, so the Jesuits they're they're a secret male society of the Roman Catholic Church. Um, there is a a controversial oath that that's been circulated. Actually, there's there's two um, that you might find if you do some investigation on your own. One of them's the Monita Secreta. Um, that's not the one I'm referring to here. There's an actual oath that they they um, are supposedly to take once they reach a certain level. Just like in Freemasonry, uh, Freemasonry, they, they, they reach a, a certain level, say 32nd degree, then you have an additional oath um, of secrecy. And the Jesuits, it it 
it's mind-boggling when you read this entire oath um, and here I'll show just a small portion of that oath you can look this up yourself in full I really encourage you to do that but it outlines the idea that they will commit heinous murder if needed in the name of the order they declare themselves a corpse or cadaver that will obey unhesitantly unhesitantly any command and um, this isn't just any Jesuit that swear an oath to it, but a graduated level, you know, handpicked to fill these secret rules. And in the same manner are the Freemasons, their secret, private, all male, secret oaths, different levels of ascension or degrees, and again, a perfect handpicking ground for satanic works. Secret society symbolism is everywhere. The most prevalent symbols that Freemasonry, Jesuits, or the Roman Catholic Church and uh, of course the famous Illuminati are associated with they all they all have this one symbol in common and I, it's ironically the one you see almost all the time and for some you don't even notice it um, if you're if you're new to conspiracy you definitely don't notice it I mean you see it every day on the dollar but yet it, you don't even think anything of it and that's the all-seeing eye or the eye of Providence all right so at the 30 minute mark in this presentation I would hope that you're still or are, th are thinking at this point that, um, you know, wow, this has been a lot of uh, great information. Um, Fa Father Malachi Martin certainly opened my eyes to things that I, I really didn't know or maybe didn't take too seriously. And I hope on my end that I contributed well to the, the interview he did with my own insights. And, and at the same time, you might be thinking, well, where do we go from here and what's the point? Well, I'll try and wrap up this video um, by giving you my my point and that is is that um, you know although there are secret societies they're 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 real they're documented they really are not the, the grave concern that this video is highlighting as a whole the the grave concern is the Luciferian agenda and certainly if he can infiltrate and control an institution as large uh, as the uh, Roman Catholic Church. There isn't any aspect of humanity that um, he is unable to penetrate, uh, invade, and, and control. And certainly that would include Hollywood with your music and movies and fashion. And you can see that clearly if you just do a little um, honest investigation yourself, just simply um, type into a search bar, Hollywood Satanic, and you'll find uh, um, so many, so many results to just jump down a rabbit hole that will blow your mind. And they um, show off their allegiance to, um, to Satan and in there uh, it's a uh, it's gang signs it's it's the 666 symbol it's the one eye symbol um, the way they dress uh, certainly indicative of that and the in the increased immorality within Hollywood and the music industry is also very in indicative of this agenda and going further when we start talking about science uh, certainly science to me is is a very important field for humanity it teaches us how to interact with our environment and and uh, be more proficient but science has been taken over by that luciferian agenda and sadly enough it's it started with the Jesuits order and the Roman Catholic scientists back in the you know the 1500s and, and 1600s and continuing on to this day um, from the likes of uh, uh, Lamatre with the Big Bang Theory um, Galileo Galilei uh, Nicholas Copernicus uh, Leonardo da Vinci um, and and on down the line these these are all contributions coming from the same source and and if you can take what father malachi said seriously it it certainly isn't a hard stretch to see where the true source of those ideas has come from because what's the result 
the result is an increasingly um, godless society. Um, the the theories and the scientific quote unquote discoveries are leading humanity away from God by a belief system that that puts God further and further away from from humanity when that's not biblical you're to believe that the universe started from a point no bigger than the size of a pen and exploded into everything you know basically out of nothing and is infinite and so um, being in touch with any kind of a creator becomes mind-boggling and um, seemingly no amount of faith can put you close to a creator that that is an infinite distant away from you so it's a separation of man from God and that's done on purpose uh, the theory of um, the Big Bang is, is is not proven it is not fact and yet science has a tendency uh, which is an indicator towards this Luciferian agenda science has a tendency to um, to push these ideas as they are fact. It's all over. It's in your face. You learn about these things in your education system. You learn about these things in, in, in your childhood, in, on the TV. Um, anytime you pick up a popular science magazine, anything like that, you're going to be subjected to the, these theories which are, are not proven and never will be because they're not, they're not science fact. So what I encourage you, and, and as somebody that has learned to break himself away from, from science and start to go out into the world and prove things to yourself, is to do the same. Certainly, uh, I believe in a um, closed cosmology. The, the Earth is definitely not a ball um, hurling through space at insane speeds. And what I encourage all of you to do is to take this information and um, and pray over it. And um, certainly I, I would encourage also that you would be more, um, more questioning to what is given to you as fact. Question science. Question what you see on, on Hollywood and news. You know, our news, our news systems are highly controlled and you're being you're constantly being told what to think and not how to think for yourself they give it to you on a dish and you eat it up um, from the time you're a child th this this form of information exchange has is, is been conditioned into you the teacher gives you the information you study it and regurgitate it on a test and you're doing the same thing every time you turn on the TV and listen to the news you take in the information, you internalize it, and you bring it to work the next day and tell all your, empl your, your employees or coworkers just how smart you are. And, and the same thing goes with science. And, you know, you're, you're just the same way. You're, you're being told what to think, and, and you are just um, reinforcing it in your mind and, and regurgitating it. All right, so I'll put the video link to the interview with Father Malachi Martin in the description. Um, to any Catholics out there, I hope I didn't overly offend you. Um, that's not my point. My point is to show you that you do not need a vicar uh, to speak to God. All you need is the Word of God um, and, and prayer uh, and a sincere heart, and you do that through the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, and I... In closing, I would like to ask that uh, I hope all of you would subscribe and like this video and share it with um, all of your friends. So t until next time, thanks for watching.